Well, yes, my name is Salome, and uh, my book is to be published in May, and it's called uh, We Are the Ones We Have Been Waiting For. And what I shall be talking to you about uh, is, uh, is uh, in the book. Um, and despite the fact that it's about power, I'm petrified to be here, <laughs> as this is my first TEDx talk, like um, Kim before that. Um, anyways, um, well, we're all used to think, and our society um, actually enhances that, that um, our happiness and our misfortune is out there. So is our salvation. We're accustomed to think of that, and we have, uh, we have gone through many, 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 many years believing that change should come from the outside so that it can come inside. I'm here to talk to you about um, a revolution that comes through evolution. By changing ourselves, we're changing the world around us. And that is my book about. Now, so as Sir Ken Robinson once said in his uh, TEDx talk about education, he said that uh, what we're short of in today's era is human resources. Uh, what we're short of is people um, expressing who they really are, um, doing what they love to do, and being who they were meant to be. Now, what we'll explore today is one of the reasons this is happening. I think it's the distorted notions we have about power, as we think that somebody else out there has it, and not us, of course. So let's begin uh, with a small exercise. Uh, what do you all feel about power? What do you think is a good or a bad thing? And uh, could you please repeat after me three times, very, very loud. I love my power. Again, I love my power. I love my power. Okay, now please repeat after me. I deserve everything. I deserve everything. Louder. I deserve everything. I deserve everything. Now, how did you feel randomly? One, one. How did you feel? Energized. Energized, good. Well, that's supposed to be the way we should be feeling all the time. But the truth of the matter is that we don't actually do. And um, yes. And uh, why? Why do, we why do we feel differently? Because when we talk about power, we feel that there's something weird about it. We have very, very bad, bad, bad connotations together with it, linking it with it. Um, so, I will put it, sometimes we feel bad about power, and I will put it uh, by some questions like Socrates did. I will pose some questions, and from there we can get into why this is happening, so we can explore what's going on with the power, so Socrates asked questions to elicit the truth. I wanted to ask you, how would the world be to the status quo if seven billion inhabitants of this sacred earth all claim their power and their birthright to live every second of their physical life as they deserved everything? How would the world be to the status quo? How would the world be around us if seven billion people were happy, were healthy as much as they could, were loved and could love back, were free, were abundant as much as they could. So how would the world be? People who are happy and content just love to work with like-minded people. They're just eager to do so. So collective action would be a daily routine. So just imagine not conforming to laws that feel unhealthy to you with another five billion people, five million people. The world will become a different place to be if we embraced our power rather than being afraid of it. Be the change you want to see in the world, like Gandhi said. Or remember, you are the one you have been waiting for. Well, <clears throat> what, 
what we are all afraid in here is not actually power, but the use of it. Power is energy, so it's up to us to use it wisely. Why do we feel weird then? Well, the answer is that we are conditioned to. But uh, thank God, the source, the universe, whoever you want to, we can actually break free from our conditioning. It comes up, it comes with the kit of being a human. Some say it just needs 21 days for the new energy to sink in. This other person here talked about 30 days. But we can break free from our conditioning. But why are we conditioned? Well, because it is convenient. Well, if um, you have sufficient amount of people believing that you, the landlord, you, the government, you, the revenue office, has the power, then the battle is won before it's begun. <clears throat> I always loved the story of the lion who thought he was a sheep. I was always drawn to this fable since I was a child, and I will, I will share it with you in a little while, as I always struggled with my own power issues. Especially when I, I decided to follow a more spiritual path, I would, um, I would think, how can I be kind? and exercise my power. How can I be a creature of light and give a fight? How can I be nice and put boundaries? How can I be kind and be angry? Well, the answer I came up with is that you can roar like a lion or even scratch like one because it will actually give you the harmony you wanted at the end. Uh, instead of sustaining someone's behavior, enhancing it with passiveness, this other option is just giving your power away. Well, we need to exercise our power muscles. Uh, we can exercise them by giving to those that love the sacred earth and everything that's in it, a good word, a good deed, money if we can, and abstain to give to those that do not. Well, even a cent can be really, really powerful as it multiplies. So that's exercising your power muscles by giving with intention or abstaining with intention. <clears throat> I strongly believe that there are those who want to change the world, like all you lovely people here, and those who are skeptical about it. Well, I believe that the skepticals, it's time that they let the workers do their job alone. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, the story of the lion is as follows. There once was a lion, um, and he lived in the fields. As they all do, as you know. And uh, there was a lovely female sh sheep uh, who um, adopted him. His upbringing left him no choice but to become a sheep in all his deeds. So he would cross, you know, and play with his siblings. But he felt a bit of a misfit. He was a lion amongst sheep. But again, uh, we all do when our unique path does not align with social norms and we decide to follow the former, our unique path, that's when we feel misfits too. So on top of his low self-esteem, every single night a pack of wolves would attack his flock. <laughs> Every single night, he would just shy away, together with the other sheep. But one night, when his mother was at stake, <clears throat> something weird happened to him. He felt as if he was going to explode. So he roared and chased with all his might, the predators. He even bit one of them. And they never returned. He embraced his true nature. And by doing this, he had his first roar. And you never come, go back again. He never went back being a sheep. <clears throat> so what if we can all become lions, or any animal we are? 
what if actually the lion represents our true nature, free of judgment, proud? This is our power. Should be proud. What if we are only conditioned to feel differently? Well, do we always use our power when we go up against something? Well, the answer is no. We sometimes, or lots of times, use force instead of power. Well, force is actually fueled, fueled by fear, and it's soaked <coughs> in judgment. Whereas power is tranquil. It's uh, the depths of the sea. Even though the uh, waves might be hovering on the surface, the depths of the sea is still tranquil <coughs> and powerful. Power is not driven by our ego, always needing to be right, but our soul is always anchored to the divine. Well, um, can we be kind and still exercise our power? Well, the answer is yes, as there are many kinds of angels. Um, uh, there's uh, Raphael, who's a healer of all ill, and there is um, Rajil, who is um, the angel of psychics, and there is Archangel Michael, who cuts down the darkness with his mighty sword. He is a warrior of light. He is committed to rid humanity of fears. And his fiery predisposition did not rob him of his angelic nature, so we too can be angel beings, kind beings, uh, living our psychic print and being different as we are. Well, we have now explored lots of things about power and uh, to reclaim it, you will need to give away something. What you will give away is your limiting beliefs. You have to release them, identify and release them. These limiting beliefs are like veils that actually stop us from being able to realize that we have power and enjoy it. Well, it is there. Only these veils, walls, have been created at the very beginning of our physical life. Therefore, we have no awareness that they are there. And these walls are shame, fear, different things. But our power is there. And by reclaiming it, by, by, by releasing all the limiting beliefs, these walls will go down. And you will have much more control and awareness of your power. So if you want to, you can do write down this exercise. Uh, you just take three days, three days of your life, and uh, you identify all the limiting beliefs concerning power. This can be anything, anything. Doesn't have to do about you, but power in general. <clears throat> so take three days and write down in one piece of paper all the limiting beliefs you have concerning power. This paper, you will either tear it or burn it. You have to be diligent. You have to be your own detective. Now, take another piece of paper, not the same, another piece of paper, and write down exact, the exact opposites of what you have written in the first paper. Just the exact opposites. Now, this second paper, you will be reading it for at least 21 days. Every single day. Now, you will become your very own personal coach empowering yourself every single day. That's a noble deed indeed. That is all, that's the exercise. Now these things I talked to you about here, you know them, you've heard them before or you felt them, but they resonate with you. But in general, you might be feeling differently than now. The reason behind this is practice. What do we practice, we become we don't practice, just fades away. So what we have practiced all these years is limiting beliefs about power. So if you want to shift this, you need to practice, you need to act, to do. At least if you like this exercise, you can use this exercise, do this release exercise. 
but do it for 21 days at least. That will make a difference. And that will take you closer to the person you were always meant to be. Just remember, you are the ones you have been waiting for. Well, um, I would like to end now with uh, some breathing exercise, which you can do at the comfort of your home as an affirmation. And we will say the same words as we said in the beginning. I love my power and I deserve everything. Only at, your, at the comfort of your home, you can do it nine times in, instead of three that we're doing it here. But first, I would like you to do some breathing. So it's three times 10, exhaling, and don't be afraid of being, you know, everybody watching you. I'll be doing it too, uh, but I won't be able to exhale very strongly as I will need to count. So please, just exhale from the nose, <laughs> three times 10, and then we will repeat the things that I will let you know. I love my power and I deserve everything. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love my power. Loud. I love my power. 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 Now again, three times ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I deserve to have everything. 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 Thank you all.